Let's look now at orientation and X and Y and Z rotation and distinguish the difference. Z rotation is similar to the one you had in 2D. It rotates on the Z axis, that is the axis pointing towards you, and that's what you have in 2D. You can go clockwise or anti-clockwise. I will undo that. The Y rotation, of course, is going to rotate on the Y axis. That's the green one here. The X rotation is going to rotate on the X axis. That is the red axis. You know you're rotating on an axis when this axis is not moving. For example, now the red axis is not moving. Here, the Y axis or the green axis is not moving. In 2D, we said a layer is on top of another layer when the arrangement in the timeline is one above the other or one under the other. But when you come to 3D, matters really change. Let's say you have them a bit spaced on the Z axis. So now you see mastering went from front to back. And they can also intersect if I use the Y rotation, they can intersect so it's no more a matter which one is on top and which one is on bottom. If I change, you notice there is no change here. It depends now on how far is a layer from the other layer on a z-space and according to the rotation. If, for example, now I increase this z-space or the z on move on the z-axis, you notice that the layer is no more intersecting the layer under it. In fact, they are quite distant. So to place layers, one behind the other, you do not use the logic of the uh, timeline, but you use the Z space, for example, and the rotation if you have any. Let me uh, undo all this. You can also use the rotation tool. You select your layer and you can rotate it in any way you deem necessary for your animation. That's one. But if you want to restrict your rotation and make it more logical, you will use your rotation tool, point on the axis, for example, the X axis, and you can drag it up and down. And you notice it's rotating on the X axis. Also, you can do the same for the Y axis. It can rotate on the Y axis. And of course, you can see now the Z axis. You can rotate on the Z axis. These are controlled rotations according to the axis. You notice that when I use the free tool, the rotation X, Y, Z did not change at all. It is the orientation that has changed. If we put back this to zero, for example, now you notice that orientation has the X axis. It rotates on the red X axis and the Y and the Z axis also now you might say why will i use uh, three parameters here when i can use one it is not recommended that orientation is used for animation actually it will not animate the way you're thinking it is the orientation is used mainly to set a layer in a certain position then start using the xyz rotation to rotate that element or that layer inside the timeline so keep in mind that if you were freely animating a layer, you are not changing the X, Y, Z rotation. You are actually changing the orientation. Let's undo this. And let's say, no, I do not want to change the orientation. I want to change the rotation here. Well, that's pretty easy to achieve. You can choose your rotation tool and come to the set here and say, okay, I don't want orientation, I want rotation. Now, when you're doing your free rotation, your free changes, you will notice that the, it is the X, Y, Z rotation that have changed. That's pretty useful if you know what, uh, you are pretty careful, and you're setting your animation, for example, from this point to this point using the X, Y, Z. Notice something very important. If you want orientation, then the orientation here is changing and the rotation is not changing. If you use rotation, then the rotations will be changing and not your orientation. There is no way to make everything change at the same time unless you come really to change the values here for yourself and you create now quite a complex animation or quite a complex setting to start with. Another important distinction you want to do 
if let's say we have this layer and we are rotating on the x axis you notice that when i rotate around 90 degrees in this case for example the layer disappears well actually it is not three-dimensional what it is is what we call is 2.5d meaning there is no depth in after effect for any layer if you are in classic cd you can change that and go to another rendering mode but that will be very taxing or you need to use a third-party software to do depths for your layers nevertheless this option of 2.5d is quite interesting and can create some very interesting animations